Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to PA's Perpetual Testing. Today we're looking at a couple of maps starting with Castle by Seven Silhouette. Where... That is a really impressive looking structure. I am not gonna lie, it, no doubt it's the eponymous castle, but... Am I going to be storming the castle? Is that what's going on here? Oh my god! Very infrequently do you see a map that is designed around a three-dimensional structure that you can be outside of at some point. Usually you're just going to be inside of a room, but... That is something special. This map is something special. In any case, let's start off. We've got two lasers to deal with, gel eventually, and three redirection cubes. Hmm. Well, we have one there, one here. What do all of them activate? Let's just take stock of what we have to begin. Okay, so that is going to dispense a ball, it appears, so long as it is active. There is... Another exit to the castle? No, simply another room. Which activates... Uh, well, it is another one of those. Activates another ball, okay. We have one spot for a ball here. We have, I assume, deadly... Not deadly traps, which is good. But... Deadly for objects. Perhaps so. I will need to get another one on here. Oh, this is X in Moon, and the other one was... Okay, so I have to have both of these sphere reception grids active... Uh, you know what I mean, the bu sphere buttons, ball buttons. I have to have both of them active for this to be able to go... Wait a second, what in the world? Okay, so if I activate this and this, it activates that ball. Got it, I think I understand. So I have three cubes with which to... I need to redirect two different sets of lasers at two different times, I think. I'm going to have to get them one by one. So, the first one we're going to get is going to be the one off to the right-hand side. Easy enough, considering we already have two of the cubes in a fairly simple position to begin with, and then we can just drag the third over. We need to keep that active now while we go and grab that sphere, because... Oh, no. No, we don't. I see, I think. So, as it so happens, the activation of that set of reception portals is going to be what finally activates... Huh. So I have to find a way... To activate that from a position where I can catch this. Fascinating. Alright. So let's see if we can get that all sussed out, figured out, all that fun jazz. Hmm. Probably something to do with portals. I mean, name of the game. What you gonna do about it? But what? Perhaps there's a portable surface over here? There is. Good. That would definitely make things a bit simpler for me. Though I'm not sure... Can I travel back around this way? I, I can, but... Oh, I can also place a portal there instead. I think that might be the one I need. Maybe. That's a big maybe. Because I am definitely not sure about this one, folks. But we're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a the good old college try. But... Yeah, okay, so I can fire it into there. Which will be my orange portal. I'm going to fire this this way. It didn't quite activate. That's fine. We just need to move our cube over here a little bit. Oh, hold on there. There we go, just aim it right towards there. Now, I'll back up as far as I can and get ready to run for that sphere. Oh. Or I would be getting ready to run if I weren't 
moderately incompetent at laser placement. So let's try that one more time, shall we? Blue and... oh no, that's, that's not what I want either. Blue and run. And... not sufficient to complete this. All right. So there is going to be something a bit trickier than what I've been thinking of thus far. It has to be. There's no other answer. How am I supposed to catch that sphere? What does this dispense? A cube? Interesting. I wonder if there's some way... ...to use this cube to complete the puzzle. Blocking the laser or something to that effect... ...would have approximately the same effect as anything else. And then... what? I mean... Fizzled cubes block lasers. I need to remember this more often. I really do. So if I deactivate this, and then I fizzle this cube, the fizzling cube will give me a small, and I do mean small, amount of time to run out. It might be enough time to get over to where the sphere dispenses. Though, I can't say that for certain, so we'll just give it our best. It's activated? No, nowhere near enough time. Alright, perhaps I'm simply not grasping what I need to know. Let's quick save really quickly and jump down here. To see if there's anything that would be revealed in the area where these things are destroyed. No, it doesn't appear so. Just a small... Room with an emancipation grid, the very beginning of the castle. Hmm. This is a bit of a puzzle, is it not? So, the glass probably has something to do with it. I'll say that right now. But I don't think that there's any way for me to properly redirect these lasers to allow them to go through glass and still reach their intended destination. For example, I could place a cube here, somehow, and then try to run back with it, but that still would not give me quite enough time. So I'm wondering... what the hell I'm supposed to do. I'm going to cut back when I figure this out, because there's no reason to make you all watch this. But this, this might take me a little while. Oh, goodness. Alright, I'm cutting back in briefly to show that I've just had an idea. Mostly by accident, but an idea nonetheless. If I place the laser so it goes directly through the path of the sphere, the sphere will actually break its own spawn laser when it appears, continuously respawning it so long as this happens. This is actually a decent setup, because I do have it going back through here and out to here. The only problem is the fact that with this setup, sending it directly backwards and then back through, I find myself completely unable to hit the other half of it. So, this is going to take a little bit of doing, but I'm thinking it has something to do with the second laser. I'll let you all know when I find out more. I believe that inspiration for the correct answer has nearly struck. I'm getting closer, but I'm not quite there. Because this works... but it doesn't continuously respawn the cube, is the issue, or the sphere, rather. I mean, promptly activating and deactivating it would cause it to respawn, but no dice there. Using this cube, perhaps? All right, I'm going to attempt to use this cube to repeatedly break and recomplete the circuit, hopefully giving me enough time to run over to that sphere. No, it does not appear that was sufficient time. This cube has something to do with the puzzle, I am certain of it. 
Perhaps the fizzling... No, the fizzling I've already shown does not work right. I can see how quickly it fizzles. Yeah, the sphere just destroys itself. I'm pretty sure that this revolves around making the sphere break its own path. That's why I have the glass walls here, but it's not really working, is it? I'd need an extra laser cube for that to work, but there's none available to me. I'm guessing that the white roof is just for show. I don't think it actually has any relevance to the puzzle at hand. So what if I fire it this way? And then backwards. What happens then? It's very nearly impossible to do, actually. I gotta... Alrighty, I believe I have found an additional piece of the solution. Previously, I had caused cubes to respawn by... This cube to respawn, that is, by breaking it there. But if I can cause this cube to fall in the path of the laser, then promptly fall out of the way, like it bounces out, I might be able to activate the part of the test that I'm supposed to, like activate this laser, say, and then simply just deactivate it long enough for another one to spawn? It's gonna be finicky at best, but I think it's possible, maybe. Anyway, this will have to be somewhere about over here. My portal for the cube is going to have to be right about here. And then I need to grab the second laser cube wherever I put it. It's somewhere around here anyway. There we are. I was experimenting seeing if I could just activate one part of the portal, or one part of the laser array, but not the other. Okay, there we go. Cubes are dispensing, as planned. Now, if you look at my orange portal over there, it is actually directly underneath the spawn portal for the cube. So, fingers crossed that when I destroy this cube, it will fall in the correct pattern to allow me to get a sphere. Perfect. That actually worked exactly as I'd hoped it would. Now I just need to do that for the other one, and that should solve this floor of the test. I'll see you all when I set that up. There we are, and dispensed. Another reason I don't think this is the intended solution is that seven silhouettes maps are usually fairly reliable in their results, and this testing method is unbelievably unreliable when it all comes down to it. It relies pretty much entirely on... Wait a minute, what in the world? Oh, my. Okay, um... Hmm. Perhaps... Wait a second, couldn't I just use the... I'm thinking that I could probably just do something sort of clever here. Hold on a sec. I don't even think this is particularly clever. I think this is just the solution, as it were. So, pull some conversion gel in here. Right, yes. Now, push it out of there. Cut the portal. Cut the portal. Cut the portal, cut the portal, cut the portal. Cut it everywhere. Okay, so, as you can see, I've now got conversion gel on the floor. If I place the orange portal beneath me, I should actually be able to bring myself upwards enough, at the very least, to see the rest of the puzzle, but more than that, enough to successfully land on that platform. What I think I need to do now, that is, is draw in some bounce gel from right over there, 
Then following drawing in bounce gel, I need to send it up into the air, and then I need to maneuver the bounce gel so it is above that bridge. Because so far as I know, emancipation grids, while powerful, do not remove bounce gel. Oh, jeez. I might have screwed this up. Might. Mind. That's not a guarantee, that's just kind of a speculation sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think I screwed that up pretty badly. Okay. Let's go ahead and just fix this up real quick. Get more conversion gel all over the floor, all that fun jazz. So, orange portal, send it through. Okay, so I need to just coat the floor in as much conversion gel as I can. Then once more, draw in the bounce gel. This time attempting to lose none of it, because any bounce gel I lose at this point... ...is going to be that much worse for me. So, orange portal here. And then I want to bring that over to the left and then destroy the portal. Yeah, there we go. That is exactly what I wanted to happen. So, because it wasn't that visible while I was doing it, here was the solution. I had to send bounce gel upwards and then move my portal to the left slightly. Moving an excursion funnel slightly to the left will adjust your portal, or will adjust its contents to correct it briefly. Which in this case, caused the gel to move sideways since excursion funnels can pass through bridges even if the gel itself can't. So the gel gets above, the excursion falls brought over, in the time between it reaching here and hitting the top, because apparently this does get rid of gel, which I didn't think it did, but perhaps I'm simply mistaken. In fact, that's almost definitely the case is that I was mistaken. But I had to bring it over there and then drop it by removing the portal with the funnel. So that fell onto the bridge and it allowed me to continue. Now we have one final test here. In which I'm given... Oh! I can portal out to the top of the castle. Let's see what's going on on this side of the test. What is going on on this side of the test? This is fascinating. I mean, maps with a certain theme to them are always fairly interesting, but maps with a theme that actually have a fairly unique puzzle to them. Oh! Goodness, if I screw this up, I'm flying to the ground. That is a terrifying thought. I think I need to make it up the battlements, though. So, blue portal there, orange portal on the floor, and leap of faith. Okay, I made it. One higher. Now, blue portal here. There, actually. And then rinse and repeat using the same orange portal on the first floor, but from b the first... Portal fling. Insufficient. I'm going to have to put it over there and then fly over the edge and give myself even further acceleration to reach the very top. Alright. So this is not unlike, uh, I think it was Mole Hill by Solid Jim, in that I have to fling myself twice to be able to reach the top, unless this little bit of added momentum from being up on this part of the battlement is enough to get me to the top. So I'll jump just in case. Because it might be... Oh, it is. Oh, well that works out fairly well then. Disregard. Oh, I hear... Oh, apparently that's just a bug where you can hear excursion funnels because of something, but... Our heart... Oh, there are probably excursion funnels set up to a device that activates this hard light bridge. Since there doesn't appear to be any sort of connection to the hard light bridge from that button directly, and I did hear some funnels right there. What is up against the- that's where I entered the test chamber, right? Alright, so... That's it. That's complete. Now, apparently Jim wasn't very happy- or not Jim, Seven Silhouette was not very happy with this one from what he said in the description of the map. Which I honestly don't understand. I thought it was a fairly good map. I mean, it was a passable map. Maybe it wasn't as tricky or as complex as some of his other maps, and I'm pretty sure that the first part of the test had the ability to be bugged through, as I most likely did. But with that said, 
the fact that you were able to create such an aesthetically pleasing map with solid tests is quite impressive. Uh, and, well, good, obviously. But one thing that I want to just point out that somebody brought up, I was ripping quite a bit on the pixel art in Pixels Are Still Alive, the series from the previous three or four episodes. And it's not because the pixel art was bad, and it is fun to make, I have no doubt. The issue, however, lies in the fact that the maps themselves were not very good. And I think it was a zero punctuation review from back in the... I think it was the Alone in the Dark one, actually. Where he said that it would have made a good game great, but it just made a bad game pretentious. In regards to the fire physics in Alone in the Dark, it sort of applies here as well. Good aesthetic design will make a good map great. Bad aesthetic design will make or good aesthetic design in a bad map will make the bad map just slightly less tolerable. Because it feels like they spent more time making that, and then they just introduced the puzzle as an afterthought. Like, the map was secondary to the pixel art which came before it. If that makes any sense. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for today's episode, since this one took me quite a while, but... Rest assured, I will be releasing PA's Perpetual Testing episodes more recently. You might have noticed over the past couple of days, we've definitely accelerated the Beat Buddy release dates, and that's simply because I wanted to keep content coming out for you all, but regrettably, I wasn't able to record. So, we're only two episodes away from the end of Beat Buddy, so look forward to that. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, this has been PA, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of Perpetual Testing. Bye! Thank you.